Welcome to Hashtag Fish, the channel where we teach the science behind shrimp and fish farming. In this video, we will talk about the different culture systems of how shrimp is farmed. I will cover the different aspects and the pros and cons of each one of them. I'm José Domingos and I'm passionate about marine biology and aquaculture. You are watching video number 8 of the shrimp series of this channel. If you want to go deeper in your understanding of shrimp farming, this series is for you. Shrimp farms started by imitation of the coastal lagoons and estuaries where shrimp naturally live. The ponds were excavated and at first used the tides to fill and drain them down. As there was not much knowledge and technology, no available shrimp feeds and difficulty in getting post larvae, the stocking densities were low. Just a handful of shrimp per square meter. This is basically the extensive system. In the extensive system, like in the lagoons, nature provides the shrimp with what to eat. But there is a limit of the shrimp biomass this system can generate. Actually, every system has a limit biomass it can generate and hold. This is what is called the supporting capacity or the carrying capacity of a system. Even though it's a simple concept, the supporting capacity is one of the most ignored concepts in the world of aquaculture. Why is that? It's because many times farmers tend to push beyond the carrying capacity of their systems, stocking more shrimp that their systems can hold. It requires both theoretical knowledge and many years of practical experience to estimate what the capacity of each system will be, but most often times it will have to be determined empirically by operating the system. It is like the engine of a car. There is a sweet spot for the maximum efficiency to run it. You cannot operate it at, at extremely high revs for too long or you will burn the motor and, and cause an accident. If you are looking for higher speeds, then you need a car with a different engine and also a proper track to race that car. In the case of an earthen pond, operated in an extensive system, no feeds are given. This is like raising a cattle in a grass field. There is so much grass in a certain area for each cow. In my experience with good preparation, this is about 20 grams of shrimp per square meter or about 200 kilos per hectare. You can think of two shrimps of 10 grams each per square meter, one shrimp of 20 grams per meter or one shrimp of 40 grams each two square meter. This is pretty low, you may think. But on the other hand, the investment from the farmer is also pretty low. Remember, it's a business and return of investment is also important. The farmer does not need to spend with feeds, with aerators, too many stuff, electricity. Nature has been providing the shrimp everything almost for free. Because there's no need to actively manage extensive systems, these ponds used to be quite large, being tens of hectares in size. So you can now imagine the other systems are a variation of the extensive system, where we will rely less and less on the natural productivity, that is the phytoplankton, the zooplankton and the benthos. And to increase the supporting capacity of the system, there is a need to further invest in feeds, pumps, aerators, electricity, and more technology, but most importantly, the knowledge to run it all. With the development and use of proper shrimp feeds, smaller ponds, about 2 to 10 hectares, proper preparation of the soil, fertilization of the water, and correct water exchange, then it gave the rise to the semi-intensive sensation period of shrimp farming. From 200 kilos per hectare, yields of up to 2,000 kilos per hectare could be achieved per crop. And with the use of aeration, the semi-intensive slash intensive system could reach around 4,000 kilos per hectare per crop. Using the same formula, but with even more aerators and stocking more shrimp per meter, productivities over 5 tons per hectare start to be achieved. Oh boy, a lot of people made fortunes in this period out of a single crop. 
and greed start to take over. Increase the stock in density, but forgetting that each system has their own supporting capacity. We cannot exclude the farm from their environment and the number one management tool with semi-intensive and intensive system is water exchange at the right time. Not only each farm has its maximum biomass it can hold, but also the surrounding environment where the farm is located. The water exchange is needed to dilute the phyto and zooplankton, which tends to thicken with all the nutrient originated as feeds as the culture progresses and starts to eutrophicate the pond environment. So this water goes back to the environment and then is captured again by the same farm and the neighboring farms. With very few exceptions in countries like Australia, no one really thought of water treatment, especially in Southeast Asia or South America. And the incoming water, once good, is now our own effluent and the effluent of others. When we go above and beyond the carrying capacity of a system, be it a pond, a farm or the surrounding environment, the system collapses. With shrimp farming, nature payback comes in forms of pathogenic viruses and bacteria, saying enough is enough. Once you have these devastating pathogens in the surrounding environment, as it's the case of white spot viruses and many others, which can come out carried by poop of a bird, let alone the intake water, it's no longer possible to operate the farms using water exchange because it will bring on the virus to your ponds. So that was the end of the semi-intensive sensation and easy profits of shrimp farming. A lot of people lost a lot of money in this once lucrative business. Some lost their dreams and some people even took their lives. Many farms were sold. Some went back to the old extensive way, stocking five or seven shrimp per meter, as was the case of Ecuador. And farmers were ecstatic to have 50% survival. That is going back to 200 to 400 kilos per hectare at best. But with the demand of shrimp on the rise and lots of trials and errors, a new way to farm shrimp came about by using smaller ponds or tanks, more attention to biosecurity, disinfection of the incoming water, using plastic liners in the ponds, intensive aeration and SPF or specific pathogen free pose larvae and above all avoiding water exchange during the crop. For all of this heavy investment to compensate there is a need to stock even higher and this was the start of the super intensive era of shrimp farming where they are stocked at hundreds per square meter and can achieve yields of a few kilos of shrimp per square meter. This is about 200 to 300 times the yield of what nature would provide in an extensive system. While these super intensive systems are super cool, they are definitely not cheap, quite the opposite. So shrimp farming now requires much more knowledge and management than ever before. And I hope this channel will help those in this quest. One last point with these super intensive systems. We still have the problem of the effluent and now perhaps we have a problem which is 200 to 300 times greater that we need to deal with. But did you know that if the aeration fails, any super intensive system and this bacterial and algal flocks are left to settle down, everything will die in less than one hour. It's a whole lot of organic matter with a very high biological oxygen demand. Of course, there are methods to treat these effluents. The problem is not the farming system, but it is for me a question of both policy and police. So you may be asking yourself, which is the best shrimp farming system of all? The answer depends on several factors. One thing that the novices tend to focus on is on the technology, but one may forget that shrimp above all, is a high-stake business. It's not for amateurs. I talk from experience, having known a bunch of those who lost of money 
and had the opportunity to know very, very few of those who made money for a significant amount of time in the shrimp farming business. In this video, I talked about the different shrimp farming systems and the main differences between them. If you learned something new today, please give us a like. And if you are interested to learn more about shrimp farming and aquaculture in general, subscribe to our channel for free. Thank you and see you next week.